So thanks for coming. I want to talk a little bit about, about not really MongoDB, but in this space in general. Um, you know, I think one of the benefits is the, the potential for making development easier and faster. Um, so, and by the way, I did not coin the term NoSQL, uh, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's good to have some name for all this stuff, but it's not exactly what this stuff is. Um, so, you know, we, when we think of this space, we think a lot about, you know, scale and big data and so forth as an advantage, but I think there's a, another thing it really brings to the table, which is in some cases can make development a lot easier. Um, Yeah, and that's what this says, is, is this talk's not, not about scale. You know, but, so the catalyst for the space was that people needed to scale, right? You know, moving, moving to something that's not relational, that's a big deal, right? Relational is, is, is very powerful. There's a lot of theory behind it. We all know it, you know, so there's a lot of good reasons to use it. Um, so to use something else is a pretty high hurdle, you know, and this desire to scale horizontally um, is, the reason the space got started. And things like distributed joins are very hard to do, so what people thought is, well, let's do something that doesn't do joins. That means you're not using a relational data model. So then the question is, well, what is the data model, right? And there's a lot of different options there. Key value, or columnar, sort of like big table, or, or sort of a document-oriented approach. Um, so, but there's an opportunity then, because we're gonna do a new data model, to innovate around the data model, and hopefully in addition to getting some scale out capabilities to, to make development easier. Um, so, so one thing that's interesting in this space is a lot of the products kind of have a, either what you might call a dynamic schema or some people say schemaless. Um, schemaless isn't quite accurate because there is some schema. You know, there usually isn't, uh, there may not be field level or column level definitions, but a lot of times there's things like collections and indexes you declare. Um, and, and, and one thing about the space is, is that the scheme, it's very dynamic at the field level. And I'd like to make an analogy with programming, right? In programming you have statically typed languages and dynamically typed languages. So these, these new databases which have these dynamic schemas are a bit more like dynamically typed systems. And I, I know personally with programming languages, I'm a big fan of statically, static typing because you get a lot of uh, feedback and errors at compile time. And, and I find that particularly useful for refactoring, right? Where if I change something, it'll just immediately tell me via errors everywhere uh, I need to go update dependencies. Um, so we have a simple C example, right, where you would get a compile error, right? It can't assign a string to an int. Um, so that's great, I get that at compile time. But in, in a traditional database, we effectively have a, a strong typing or static typing because I predefine the columns in, in the table, but I don't get a compile time uh, error report. I get a runtime error report. So I, I find that kind of a fascinating difference because um, you, you, I'm, not get, I'm still dealing with the runtime errors. Um, I'm not getting kind of an upfront and development process error. So it's, it's a little different and I think this is one reason why in, in this space and the data side, the dynamic schema stuff could make sense. So I wanna talk about sort of the data model in the space that, that I know the most about, which is these document-oriented data models. And, and these are really all JSON-inspired or based on. Um, there's, there's several products in this space which use JSON as a common, uh, or as their um, fundamental building block for these documents. So um, I think some of this applies to all of them. Um, the nice thing about JSON is, you know, it's a standards-based language-independent way to store object-style data. You know, we don't want, you know, we don't want the data model to be too coupled to one programming language because the languages we use change over time. And, and we want to store, you know, all of these languages today have, are sort of object-oriented. Um, we need to be able to store object-style data in a, without a lot of work, but at the same time, you know, we don't really want to pull in methods or, or class hierarchies and that sort of thing. Um, that would be too tightly coupled to a specific program or programming language, right? I think one of the big ideas in databases is, is separating the data from the code, right? I should be able to look at the data and understand it without reading your code. And um, you know, that's certainly the case in relational. I think it's important that that is not lost here. 
Um, you know, one thing I like about JSON versus XML is it's just easier from, it's more human readable. And especially if you're a programmer, right, it, it, it looks very familiar. And of course, you all already know it. You know, so just an example here of a, a JSON document, um, you know, slightly annotated with a, a couple types. So there's, there's sort of uh, extensions, or if you will, in, in certain ways uh, in some of the products. This is an example from Mongo, which is the one I know, so I, I'm doing the example from it. So we have a document here, and, and the idea is this is a, about a blog post, right? So we have the title of the blog post, you know, who wrote it, and then the text body of the blog post. So, you know, we've started to, to write our system for doing uh, a, some kind of blog post content management system. Um, and, and one of the ideas here is you can do a lot, you can really be iterative with your development, right? So, which, which is a common pattern these days for, for our methodology. So, so we're off to the start, we write some code, we, we're using this, and now we need to kind of go to the next step, which is, you know, add tags for the blog post. So, so we add that in here, and, and, and because of the uh, dynamic schema nature, we can add this on, you know, the new posts have tags, maybe there were some existing posts that didn't, so obviously we're not having to update a schema. Um, and then the nice thing though, which is very important, is that you can reach into these documents and do queries, right? So if, if, if this was a pure key value store, you know, you sort of have primary key to you know, you could have a big JSON document that, that's the value, but, but you couldn't reach into that, uh, which means uh, you would kind of lose a lot of semantic capability. But here you can, so for example, on this query it's saying, find me all the blog posts which have a tag that is news, right? So, so uh, that's a pretty compact representation of that query, I think. Now, we wanna keep going and building out our system, so, um, we might then add voting, right? So, so each post has a number of upvotes, and we might want to track who, who voted uh, by username. So here we have you know, a number of votes and the voters, so we add that in too. Uh, then we might want to do comments on each blog post. So the nice thing here is we can actually embed the comments within the blog post uh, document, right? So in these systems, there's a couple ways to, to approach schemas, which is, one is embedding, and then the other is, is you can do linking. Usually that's done client side because joins or links are hard uh, in, in a horizontally scalable system. So, so here we have some comments, and each of these is document, are documents themselves. So kind of embedding you know, arrays of sub-documents to any level uh, is a nice feature. So, so the point of this is that uh, you know, it, this feels to me like um, a pretty easy system to build if, if I'm working with something like this. And I'm iterating, I'm adding these things in, and, and it just feels very natural. So I, I think from a developer perspective, it can be um, very productive. And then, you know, if we look here at, at what's in this entity, you know, there, I, I think there's sort of 10-ish kind of entities here. Um, you know, if, if you think about how you would do this with relational, you know, a common way to design your schema would be, I think you might have four tables here and 10 rows, right? So, you know, there's probably a post table, there's a tags table, there's a voters table, there's a comments table, and that's fine, right? There, there's a lot of power to relational, I think especially with reporting, it's really great at reporting. The group by kind of operator and SQL is, is very powerful. Um, but, but if you think about something where you're writing code and doing very operational things for um, like say an app server or whatever uh, you're working with, yeah, I think this is a pretty natural approach too. Um, you know, if, if you think about kind of your traditional database approach, you know, just saying, give me this document, right? Give me this object, if you will. Um, we can do it, but it, it's a little bit involved. You know, if I, if I had those kind of four tables, you know, how do I do that? I mean, one way to do it is do three or four queries and just grab everything. There's other approaches where you can grab it all at once, but they get a little more complicated. So, um, so, so this is kind of nice, I think, from the developer side. And, but once again, it, it's, if you can't query on the data in here, it, it's actually probably more work, right, than instead of less work, right? It's nice if we, kind of put everything together in a way our program can understand, but, but if the database can't do everything, anything but you know, find a blog post on primary key, you know, I, 
it's more of a pro-con situation. So here's an example where, you know, when you want to say, you know, find me all the blog posts where, where a certain person commented on them, uh, we can do that here. And in addition, we can even build an index on that so that it's fast, right? So I, I think, once again, that query is, that's a pretty compact representation, uh, representation of, of what we want to say there. You know, find me all the blog posts uh, which have a comment by Gora. You know, it's actually shorter than the English statement, right? So it, it's pretty, pretty good. So, so this is an example, I think, of, of where we can help with development and, and be agile. And, and you know, there's a lot of products in space and, and, and takes on this. So that this, this isn't unique to one product. I think in this quote unquote no SQL space, there, some products have more of an emphasis on scale and some more on agility. But you know, in the long term, um, they probably all tend to try to do both, right? I, I think uh, these products, in order to scale well, what they do is, is they leave out joins, because joins are hard, and they, and they leave out super complex transactional semantics. You might have some semantics, but you don't have super complex ones, and, and because that's actually hard to do too, also on a, a giant cluster of machines. Uh, but because they leave these things out very consistently, I think all the products in the space in the long run will scale very well. Um, Hopefully they also are agile too, because you know we have an opportunity to do new things like this. Um, but the the products today, you know, they come uh, either more from an, an initial starting point of a scale emphasis or an initial starting point of an agility uh, emphasis, and then they're both kind of moving towards the same area over time, um, which yeah, I think uh, they that'll be the common things in this space. Um, other dimensions will vary, you know, the exact data models will vary, uh, consistency models will vary a little bit, um, and data distribution models will vary a little bit, but um, I think non-relational, facilitating agile, and uh, will be uh, common properties of these solutions. And, and you know, I, if the bigger the project, the bigger the organization, I think, you know, it's not one size fits all anymore. So one will use uh, multiple technologies. So uh, in, in a very big project or a very big organization, what I would want to do if I were a CTO or something is, you know, I, I would want one of these NoSQL solutions for, you know, scalable, high performance, you know, operational uh, data access. You know, lots and reads and writes, you know, uh, at high speed, uh, maybe, you know, semi real time so that low latency for the user in addition, I want something for reporting and business intelligence. Um, you know, today these are not probably optimal for that, except for a subset of cases where you know you need giant scale or you need archiving or things like that. Um, but in general, um, you know, I think your classic data warehouses are a good solution so far, and, and that that actually scales pretty well because if we make a bunch of assumptions like, oh, it's going to be a star schema, and you know we're going to bulk load data at night, then all of a sudden the scale out becomes much easier. But in addition, I think you're still going to have your classic RDBMS when you need very complex transactional semantics, or you have data just, just fundamentally is most elegantly represented in a relational data model, right? If you're doing an accounting system, you know, it's a no-brainer because, you know, forget about the transactions, just the data is going to map very nicely to that. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, so, so that's all I have, but I, I think in my, for me, I think making development easier and more elegant is just as big a property in this area as, and, and kind of opportunity for all of us to gain something as, uh, as getting kind of scale out um, also. Any questions? So the question is, what do people use the most with something like this? Ver oh, what do they miss from the old things? Uh, I think you'll miss complex transactions. Although if, you know, like in Mongo, for example, uh, you can do atomic operations on a document. So, so if you make that, if that document's pretty rich, and it could be, it could be a couple megabytes in size and have hundreds of fields in it. So that's sort of my unit of, of atomicity, 
So you, you, you can still do things, but you know, with full generality, uh, you can't. I think what you would miss also would be reporting. You can do reporting, but is it the easiest way of all possible technologies to do reporting? Uh, probably not. You know, I think over time, the, the, uh, the way we do aggregation on these things is improving, like we're seeing it with Hadoop, right, with you know, things like Hive and higher level abstraction layers on top of them. So I think that's gonna change, and, and if, if there, is, there is a gap there, I think it's gonna you know, either go away or, or be smaller, um, but, but reporting, I think, would be something you'll miss today uh, with most of them. You can do it, but it might not be quite as easy. And, and okay, we're, we're out of time, but I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm doing a session at 1.30 p.m. today. If there's more questions, it'll, it'll be a little bit like this one, except in much more depth. Thanks a lot. <laughs>